screw fixation, and plating. The following exercises will be shown. Screw fixation. A 4.5 mm cortex screw and a 6.5 mm cancellous screw. Plating. A distal spiral fracture and a lateral tibial head fracture. The placement of the bone in the vise. The tension can be optimized by turning the screw at the end of the lower handle. If the bone is fixed in either too tightly or too loosely, the vise may spring open. This is how the vise may be reclosed. The 4.5 mm cortex screw. For this exercise, the following instruments and implants are required. The 4.5 mm drill bit with the double drill sleeve 4.5 3.2 and the 3.2 mm drill bit with the same drill sleeve. The 4.5 mm cut ink. The large depth gauge. The 4.5 mm tap with T handle. Again with the double drill sleeve, 4.5 3.2. The hexagonal screwdriver with corresponding holding sleeve. And 4.5 mm titanium cortex screws. The cortex lag screw. The distal part of the bone is clamped into the vise. The proximal cut in the bone will be used. Drill the gliding hole with the 4.5 mm drill bit through the near cortex, approximately perpendicular to the fracture line. Insert the 3.2 mm drill sleeve and with the 3.2 mm drill bit, drill the thread hole through the opposite cortex. Countersink the hole for better seating of the screw head. Measure the depth. The depth of the hole is indicated on the scale. Tap the hole with the 4.5 millimeter tap and corresponding sleeve. The appropriate cortex screw is chosen, in this case 38 millimeters, and the length is checked. Insert the screw and tighten it. As the screw head comes into contact with the proximal cortex, the gap starts to close. The computer animation further illustrates the mechanism. Note the gliding hole in the proximal cortex. The screw head comes into contact with the bone. And with further tightening, the fracture gap closes. Now the cortex screw is demonstrated without a gliding hole which does not provide compression. A hole is drilled with the 3.2 mm drill bit and drill sleeve through both cortices. The depth is measured. Tapping with the 4.5 mm tap and sleeve. Insertion of the 4.5 mm cortex screw. Again, the screw is tightened. 
The gap will not close because the thread of the screw is engaged in both cortices. This concept is illustrated once again in the computer animation. No occlusion of the fracture gap occurs. Therefore, this procedure should not be practiced in surgery. The 6.5 mm cancellous screw applied to the medial tibial head required are a K wire with a triple drill guide. The 3.2 mm drill bit with the double drill sleeve 6.5 3.2. The large depth gauge. The 6.5 millimeter tap with T handle. And the double drill sleeve 6.5 3.2. millimeter cancellous screws with short and long threads. A washer and the hexagonal screwdriver with corresponding holding sleeve. Reduce and fix the fragment with a pointed reduction forceps. For preliminary fixation, insert a K-wire parallel to the joint, having previously planned the position of the screw. Drill the thread hole with the 3.2 mm drill bit and sleeve without penetrating the opposite cortex. Measure the depth. Tap the near cortex with the 6.5 mm tap and sleeve. Insert a 6.5 mm cancellous screw with short thread and washer. The threaded portion of the screw must finally be positioned beyond the fracture. The desired compression is achieved by tightening the screw. If the consistency of the bone is dense, a washer may not be required. Remove the K-wire and the reduction forceps. Note the position of the threaded portion of the screw. A distal spiral tibial fracture. The LCDCP drill guide can be recognized by its contoured undersurface. It consists of a green neutral end and a yellow eccentric end. The universal drill guide is a spring-loaded telescopic guide used for neutral and eccentric drilling. Both guides are used with the 3.2 mm drill bit. The fragment is reduced and fixed proximally with a pointed reduction forceps. For temporary fixation to ensure joint alignment, insert a K-wire distally parallel to the joint. In the proximal region of the fragment, drill a gliding hole for a cortex lag screw with the 4.5 mm drill bit. Insert the 3.2 mm drill sleeve and drill the thread hole in the opposite cortex with the 3.2 mm drill bit. Countersink for the screw head. Measure the depth. Tap with a 4.5 millimeter tap. and insert the 4.5 mm cortex screw. Interfragmentary compression of the fracture is achieved. 
the reduction forceps can now be removed. An LCDC plate will now be applied to the medial aspect of the bone to stabilize the fracture. A bending template is used to facilitate the contouring of the plate. Contouring of the plate using the bending press. To begin, the handle of the bending press must be aligned with the instrument. Adjust the screw on the block. Insert the plate and tighten the screw to hold the plate in position. Bend the plate to correspond to the template. Use the bending iron to twist the plate. The plate may also be contoured with the bending pliers. Again, the pressure is adjusted by turning the screw on the handle. Note that there are different curvatures. The appropriate position is selected. If the plate is held at an angle, it can be bent and twisted at the same time. The plate is now ready for application and is placed on the bone. The green end of the LCDCP drill guide with the arrow pointing towards the fracture will provide a neutral screw hole. The yellow end of the LCDCP drill guide, also with the arrow pointing towards the fracture, will provide an eccentric screw hole. A short 4.5 millimeter cortex screw is inserted neutrally through the middle hole of the plate. Drill a hole in the proximal cortex with a 3.2 millimeter drill bit. Tap with the 4.5 millimeter tap. and insert a 16 millimeter long screw for the preliminary fixation of the plate. The universal drill guide allows for eccentric placement of a screw when not depressed. and neutral placement of a screw when depressed. A cancellous screw will be inserted through the most distal plate hole. Drill the hole parallel to the joint without penetrating the distal cortex using the 3.2 millimeter drill bit. Measure the depth. Tap using the 6.5 millimeter tap. And insert the 6.5 millimeter cancellous screw with short thread. Interfragmentary compression is achieved by tightening the screw. The K-wire can now be removed. A cortex screw will be placed in the most proximal plate hole. Drill the hole with the 3.2 millimeter drill bit. Measure the depth. Tap using the 4.5 millimeter tap. and insert the 4.5 millimeter cortex screw.
Fill the second proximal plate hole in the same manner. Insert a second 6.5 millimeter cancelless screw distally through the plate. The 16 millimeter long cortex screw is now replaced by a longer screw, which will provide interfragmentary compression. To this end, drill a 3.2 millimeter hole in the neutral position into the opposite cortex. Then drill the gliding hole in the cortex nearest the plate using the 4.5 millimeter drill bit. Measure the depth. and insert the 4.5 millimeter shaft screw. The shaft screw offers a better gliding ability in the gliding hole, resulting in optimal interfragmentary compression. The fixation is stable. No more screws are necessary. Although a gliding hole is drilled into the cortex nearest the plate, the thread of the screw catches in the cortex. The result is reduced compression. With a shaft screw, it does not catch in the cortex. This can bring about an increase in compression of up to 60%. Lateral tibial head fracture. Reduce the fragment and fix it with a pointed reduction forceps. Insert a K wire for preliminary fixation. Conquering a ring of the L buttress plate for the lateral side of the tibia. The curvature of the plate may have to be adjusted slightly. A bending template can be used to determine the degree of adjustment. Place the contoured L buttress plate on the bone and fill the oval screw hole with a 16 millimeter long 4.5 millimeter cortex screw. In this way, it's still possible to find the optimal position for the plate. Insert a 6.5 millimeter cancellous screw with short thread through the top plate hole as a lag screw. The screw must not penetrate the opposite cortex. Insert a second cancellous screw with short thread. Fix the plate distally with a 4.5 millimeter cortex screw. Remove the 16 millimeter screw and drill the hole through the opposite cortex with the 3.2 millimeter drill bit. Measure the depth. 
Tap. And insert a cortex screw. Remove the K-wire. The fixation is now stable, and the plate offers the required support. The buttressing has been achieved by the distal screws.